Death is one of the harsh realities of living on a homestead. And that's one of the reasons why we actually think it's good for our kids to be living in this way is so that they get to experience some of these things that uh, are not necessarily pleasant, but are a part of life. So today I thought I would take you through some of the animals on our homestead that didn't survive this winter. The first animals are maybe not necessarily animals that didn't survive the winter um, because we slaughtered them. And it was, you may remember, we had two turkeys that we had kept to be a breeding pair to raise a turkey poults. And we did a little bit of research and realized that these broad-breasted white turkeys, these heavy, heavy variety of white turkeys, actually cannot breed. The way that they're cro crossbred to be so big and so meaty actually kind of physically prevents them from breeding. So we decided right before actually the big bomb cyclone came through um, and we know that the temperatures were going to be so bad and we went ahead and slaughtered them right before that. Now, the next two losses I want to talk about are actually kind of the most tragic of them. Um, we, we actually lost both of our kittens this winter. Uh, the first one, we, we lost Pantalmi and the boy um, a couple months ago. He was actually hit by a car. And so we found him on the street in front of our house, just down the road a little ways. And that was very sad and very hard to deal with. And yeah, we tried to look at some of the bright side and um, you know one of the things on the bright side was that we actually found his body and so we knew that it was him and he was our kitty and that we brought him home and were able to say goodbye to him on the other hand Juliet the girl the the sister kitten just about three weeks ago she just never came home again and so we assumed something happened to her something got her or she got hit by a car or or something along those lines but it's kind of hard not to know. It's kind of sad to not know. And so as hard as it was to find Pentalbian's body in the street, um, we're actually glad that we got to see him and say goodbye to him. Pentalbian was kind of a lot more friendly. He was the boy and he uh, would sit on the front porch with my son. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna especially miss, Ju miss Juliet because she had kind of turned into my little milking buddy. Whenever I would go in the barn to milk, Sylvia, she would come on in because when I was stripping the first couple of squirts of milk out of Sylvia, I would put those in a bowl for Julia and she would come drink that in the barn next to me while I was milking. She was doing a great job at chasing little critters on the farm too. We caught her a couple times with my servals helping keep down the rodent population on the homestead and that was one of the real things that we had wanted those cats to do so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to acquire some more cats here soon another sad blow on the homestead this winter was we lost our bees we had attracted a swarm last summer when we first got here jeremy put out our empty bee boxes um we had two of them and he he put out both of them and one of them had us uh, had a swarm move in and so they were, they were super healthy, super active. But this colony just seemed really strong and really thriving. And the colony was active and alive even in the beginning of February. So we were really disappointed to finally, to, to crack open the hive and realize that they had ultimately not survived this winter. We did lose a number of chickens this winter. Um, that's kind of how it goes with chickens. They're not the most hardy of animals. Um, and so the best idea that we've found is just kind of to keep a constant rotation going. Just buy new chickens every spring and then you can keep your numbers up. But one of the chickens that we lost was a, was a, a really old chicken. It was like a retired chicken from someone that was getting rid of their flock. Um, so that was like not unexpected. But another one that we lost was one that was just like two years old. Um, I don't know if it got sick or what, you know, or that we, you know, we did end up with some really cold weather at one point. Um, and the other chicken that we lost was actually our rooster. This is a new rooster um, that we got from some friends. If you remember, our last rooster was actually black and he didn't ever really seem to integrate well into the flock. It kind of seemed like he was getting picked on a lot. He didn't really ever seem to be acting like the 
the one in charge of the flock like roosters are supposed to be. We got him as a young rooster from a flock that already had an established alpha male. And so I wonder if he just was more submissive because of that and never established his dominance. And so I don't know if that's why um, he didn't survive. But so that was three chickens that we lost over the course of the winter. So the last animal loss of the winter actually just happened last week. And it was, um, it was actually our guineas. We had raised the guineas with the chicks that we got when we first bought our property. And so they lived with the chickens and they would go away in the, um, in the chicken house at night. And that was something that I had read was how you can uh, train your guineas, you know, to be a little more tame and to come home at night so that they wouldn't, um, you know, so they wouldn't just wander, wander off and never come back. But ultimately, they started bullying the chickens and Jeremy was actually starting to get pretty annoyed and had kind of was thinking that we might go ahead and, and harvest them and eat them. He thought maybe if we had less guineas, they would fight less with the chickens, you know? They were starting to wander more and wander across the street and things where they were just gonna be a little bit more trouble. And so we were, we were kind of trying to come up with a solution. We had started trying to separate them from the chickens and we're, we were trying to get them to roost. We built a roost for them up in the barn so that they could maybe roost in the barn. Um, but they were preferring to just roost on the ground. And Jeremy came out one morning last week and he found the carcass of one of them. And it really hadn't been eaten, just like the head was eaten. We kind of find, found piles of feathers around. We're a little bit surprised to think that something could have gotten all four of the guineas. We thought maybe some of the guineas uh, got scared off and that they might return home in the next couple of days. But at this point, we're not thinking that any are gonna come home.